remote parts of the country in the villages where they usually do not get access to high-end technology. So I do not want to take Mehdi's uh, thunderstorm away. I will uh, invite Mehdi to come to the uh, podium uh, and give his presentation. Thank you, Dr. Hawk. <clears throat> okay. So thank you, everyone. Uh, I usually tend to talk more. Please stop me if the time is up. So I co-founded this uh, Center for Robotic Innovations and Development as the parent uh, nonprofit, which and Cambi Health is an initiative of this. Uh, Dr. Noreen Hawk, she couldn't come here. Um, uh, so let's go to the next slide. Oh, do I need to? So, uh, what we have developed, um, our project, middle of nowhere. Sorry about the typo there. Oh no, I fixed it. Looks like okay. So, uh, middle of nowhere. What it sounds exactly what it is. If you have a place anywhere in the world, we can replicate this model in 48 hours, where there is no doctors available. You need a clinic and there is no doctor available in that remote area. There is no electricity. There is no internet. And we can go there and apply that. Like, for example, we just had a heart earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Unfortunately, we could not implement it because of their local government's regulations, but we tried. We could do that. How we do that, it's a mo modular deployment we care, we call it care over cloud all we need is like tablets android tablets and before i explain all these let me go to the next slide and the, there is a short presentation and then i'll explain how we do it is it sorry healthcare services to the remote corners of the world where people do not have access to healthcare let alone technology, internet services, or even electricity. Let's talk about how Kembai Health can provide healthcare services in those areas where you may have to travel hours to obtain basic healthcare services. That may include seeing a doctor, but may not have any pathological lab, radiology support, or availability of appropriate medications. The cost of the transportation takes a toll both physically and financially for these marginalized people who are already sick. Also, there would be no documented health record for these patients, which makes it impossible for any methodical follow-ups. What Cambi Health did, we set up clinics in a remote area. We hired locals and trained them as paramedics, as medical assistants. We gave them tablets with seven hour battery power, solar panels, satellite internet services. These trained paramedics are now equipped with the knowledge and technology to connect with a wide range of physicians around the world. The way these paramedics provide services to the local patient is a collaborative effort. First, they register the patient, then document their medical history, record vitals, and connect the physicians via our telehealth platform. They are trained to perform focused physical exam per the physician's advice. The diagnosis was done by the expert physician and recommendations were noted in the medical record system. Blood tests were drawn and transported to the nearest lab and the results were uploaded in the system. A doctor from the central office reviewed the results and contacted the patient directly via phone and appropriate recommendations provided. There is a tiered approach to review critical cases with specialists from around the world. We have achieved the capability to roll out a new satellite clinic in 48 hours anywhere in the world. This is Kenby Health. Let's collaborate and provide healthcare for the underprivileged. Thank you. So to explain that, uh, let me go to the next slide. So these are the three centers, our proof of concept we have uh, done and we have been running it for more than a year. We developed it, it took four years to develop the whole thing and now we can grow it exponentially. 
Uh, Dr. Hawk and I, were, when I was talking to him, telling him about it, he said, your target is to roll out 1,000 clinics in the next one year. Uh, that sounds too much. Let's come up with a realistic figure. And I said, no, I mean it, we're going to do it. So next year, next Catalyst program, I need your help to roll out 1,000 satellite clinics. So these are the three ones, uh, the Rangpur, uh, the, that, and the middle one is the, actually the first one. Uh, we did it from scratch. You see this container type of metal building? We did it like from the scratch. And then we set up the, uh, the bottom one is actually the second one and the top one is the third one. And our, we do not provide services. Our main focus was primary care. Now we are moving on to cancer. But in the primary care, it's not like a patient comes in and just, uh, I mean, goes back with some medication. We actually care about quality of care. And trust me, I'm not trying to oversell my thing. In many ways, we have developed the technology that it provides better care than what you receive here in the U.S. The qu this is how. When we go see a doctor in the U.S. when we have the best HMO or PPO, how many times a year we see a doctor when we are not sick? Probably four times a year or less. And then we take medication. We do not have precision medication. What we do, we, it's backed by EMR, backed by an app, and we have six wearable devices that constantly collect the data and it, uh, we have a command center where it alerts the physician. We have always 24 by 7 on-duty staff. Uh, they're receiving if there are blue, orange, red, we have different color codes of the patient. And patients are wearing watches like this and there are many other things. And we are actually, our vision is we should be able to uh, monitor patients 24 by 7. So that's where we're heading to. And in primary care, we have achieved in many ways of doing that. So these are our six devices that, oh, there are five. There are actually one more device we have. So this integrated life alert device, we have implemented it to the poor. And most of these devices cost anywhere from 2 to $10 a piece. So these are not expensive. So uh, integrated life alert device, if they're in need, the person, our main focus was geriatric population, and they're the most distressed population, I would say, because when they're 70 plus year old, no one really cares for them. So they can click on that and then remotely, our doctors can monitor them. I can talk about it, all day long, I'm passionate about it, but uh, let's leave it here, and I'll be here to, today and tomorrow. If you have any question, we can talk about it. So basically, with Life Alert device, it's kind of like a call to 911, and our uh, staff responds to it and tries to help them. So we also have a workflow process, because we are big on workflow. and. One of the problems that we found out in third world countries, not only in Bangladesh, you go see a doctor, it's a paper prescription, and there is no drug interaction review done because doctors are great, but the entire methodology and system is not available in most third world countries. And that's what we have created. It's embedded in our software platform, both app and the EMR backend. They're all integrated. They're all over cloud, so it doesn't matter who the patient sees, we capture the information and then that helps to diagnose the disease and corrective actions properly. And uh, this is the EMR, it's cloud-based, so we have about 14,000 volunteers. 9,000 medical students around the world are volunteering with us and about 4,000 physicians. Although majority of them are in Bangladesh, we started with Bangladesh, but there are volunteer physicians, a big number of volunteer physicians from the U.S. 
and some of them are attending at Johns Hopkins University, uh, Harvard, and uh, UT Southwestern, and many others. So what we have done, the high-end professionals, they are our tier four. Tier four and tier three, they are 100% volunteers. Tier one are the medical grad local me medical graduates. They provide, uh, you know, services, they are paid. And then tier two, some are paid, some are volunteers. So this is the screenshot of um, uh, EMR. This is the app. I'm just going to quickly go over that. So this is a nutshell. And let's open. Did I go over time, Dr. Hawk? Or, OK. So I, I want to go for Q and a, a session now, if you have any question. And I'll be here. I really want collaboration, and I really want to roll out. And we'll thank you so much for bringing me here. Uh, last year I came, but next year when I come, I really want to say we have some achievement together. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a great initiative that you have undertaken. And we all really would love to see those thousand centers that you are, you know, you're planning to, uh, you know, you know, implement across Bangladesh or anywhere in the world. So is it a deal from the audience? Can we make it thousand center by next year of, I mean, by next May? Is it a deal? <laughs> Will, is it a deal? I didn't hear the crowd. Looks like I'm a boring speaker. <laughs> it's a deal? Questions? Okay. Questions? So um, any question for Mehdi? And if there are any questions for the previous speakers, I probably will have to go to the other podium because the technology is set up so that I can read it over there. Any questions for Mehdi? Mehdi, do you see any question on the? Oh, there are no questions. Okay, there are no questions and online. So, you know, thank you for, um, is there a question somewhere? I thought I saw a hand. No. Okay, no. Okay, you know, thank you. Oh. Mike, yeah. I'm looking Crouch, I'm a radiation oncologist from the Netherlands and I'm here because of Will and you know that everybody gets enthusiastic when he's uh, uh, telling us these kind of things. Um, it's, it's a great uh, initiative. My question is you want to expand to other countries. I don't know how, why Bangladesh was the first one, but doesn't uh, matter. Um, if you would like to expand to Africa, you have to realize that the situation will be very different. And I think some of colleagues here from Africa can tell you what the differences are in uh, comparison with Bangladesh. So what is your strategy to get to other continents like, for example, Africa and to specific countries where the needs might be very different? And of course, if you want collaboration, there will be uh, enough people to work with you. Okay, so I forgot to mention, it's about almost three months that we have started in Cameroon. So we have a center running in Cameroon, not full-fledged, but we have started working there. The model is very simple. Step one, we hire locals and we train them as medical assistant and paramedics. So they l start learning how to listen to the hearts, taking temperature, vitals, and stuff like that. They go through continuous training. And we do satellite internet, uh, you know, thanks to Elon Musk and there are a few other companies out there, Starlink and others, we can provide satellite internet. Solar panel is widely available and we use tablets, both iPhone and Android. We deploy that. So that's very simple and there are a few medical devices that we send. And then the tier one is always local people. Tier two physicians are always, we try to go with the local physicians who may be in the same country or speak the same language and then that's how we roll it out. So it's, it doesn't matter, language is not a barrier, country is not a barrier. The government could be a barrier because some countries they're very strict about, you know, but that's pretty much it so we could replicate very easily. 
So, not one, so we'll just take one more question uh, uh, in the interest of time. Thank you, Mehdi, for such a wonderful presentation. Just to catch on uh, what you're uh, saying in uh, regards to language, I wonder what that entails for places which English is not the language of instruction because most of the, it seems like it's an English app and how do you intend to uh, the, do it? Uh, good, it's not us, it's the technology is there. Changing the app, we have the capability in any language. It, it's just, it, it doesn't take long at all. We can switch the language and the collaboration among the physicians, uh, uh, I mean, we have different CME programs. I, so far, we, ha we don't think it's going to be a problem to uh, communicate with the physicians and provide CME training in English, but we are considering other languages as well. So high-end, but most of the African countries, the physicians can speak English. And then patient and uh, 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 physician relationship is in the local languages. Thanks, Mehdi. Um, so as you can see, on the on the screen here, thank you. Yeah, uh, the the first of a kind, the GHC um, and the SAR country, South Asia, is this collaborative first meeting will be occurring on September 16 in Dhaka, Bangladesh. You are invited. Mark your calendar, please. You're that we'll be discussing many things, and uh, at